Shalom, sister Shalom, Kohalo Yahweh by Shem Hamashiach, Ramalaki Yahushai. All honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Lord willing, y'all are feeling good through the spirit. It's Monday. It's a fresh start to a fresh new week. Lord willing, sisters are, you know, taking the time to just be grateful for another day. And, you know, although it's Monday, you know how people say you had a Monday blues, it's another day. Oh, I wish it was a Sabbath. You know, you might have that spirit on you, but we, we still have to be thankful and grateful for another day to, you know, suppress new week. Repent, get right, get our spirit right with your how about Shimmy Shai and just, you know, do better overall. So all praises and honor and glory to you, how about Shimmy Shai. To do a quick little motivational, you know, Monday for sisters, something that for us to meditate on. And I wanted to just bring out how it's nothing too hard for the Lord. All right, it's Jeremiah 32 and 27. Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You know, it's nothing too hard for the Lord. And that's a question that the Lord is asking us. Is there anything too hard for me? And typically when somebody asks you a question, you got to think about it before you speak. And when you think about all of the things that the Lord has done for our forefathers and foremothers, all through the, um, the works that he did in Egypt, you know, the things that he did for Sarah, blessing her womb, the things that he did for Hannah, the things that he did for um, Susanna, the things that he did for Esther, Judith, you know, all of our righteous, Jael, Tabitha, all of the things that he did for our foremothers, blessing their wounds, bringing them back to life. Um, you know, sisters having babies in old ages, sisters are delivering up their enemies, you know, it's the power that the Most High has and all of the things that he's done for us in the past, how much more for us now if we're those same people and we're still trying and striving for perfection. You know, it's nothing too hard for the Lord. And the Lord doesn't change. He changes not. The Lord does not change, so it's no different. He's the same Lord that he was in Exodus. That's the same Lord that we serve today. It's nothing too hard for the Lord if you're going through any trials, tribulations, you're going through any um, obstacles, whatever the case may be, it's, it's nothing too hard for the Lord to answer your prayers and to bring you out of it. All right, and this is John 14, 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Lord is telling us if you ask anything in his name he is going to do it for you whatever you ask in the name of your how about shimmy i was shy he's going to do it so that the father may be glorified in your how shy kohalo your how about shimmy i shy and i just wanted to do a quick little testimony for sisters um something that happened to me recently i pretty much was in a position where I felt like I was trapped in my job. And if y'all know me, you know, you know, I haven't worked in a long time. I usually have my businesses. I have, you know, a little side hustle, making whatever, you know, is on my spirit to make. Um, I've been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life. So it's, it's just something that I wanted to do. I was like, look, I, I don't want to be an entrepreneur right now. I just want to work part time. and. Okay, our praises go in there and go um, throw it in the trash. It's something that I've been doing. I'm doing, I'm gonna, doing a video. Hold on, I said wait. Pick up the mess. You know, it's something that I've been doing pretty much my whole life. And you know, that Proverbs 31 woman in us just, you know, have that itch to just still wanna make a little bit of money on the side. Even when you a stay at home mom, it's like, ah, oh, I just wanna, you know, it's nice to have you know, money to help, you know, I got pets, we got kids. It's just nice to have extra money. And it's nice to just, you know, be that Proverbs 31 woman. Not saying that if you don't work, you're not a Proverbs 31 woman because some sisters aren't in a position to work, um, even if you are at home. But my job was to stay at home. Um, I worked from home and I was still, you know, taking care of the kids, homeschool, et cetera. So it was just becoming a little bit too much for me. And I felt like, I was, essentially, I felt like I was trapped in my job, and my job was with child support, y'all, so it was just, oh my gosh, when I tell you, it was draining. Like, it just became 
so draining talking to these people about child support, where their money at, and hearing all the stories, being caught B words, being just, these people are nuts, you know? And it just, it's unfortunate, you know, what our people got to go through that you have to call somebody to ask where your payment is for a man that don't want to be there for your kids. I mean, it's just so sickening. It is just really, it's, 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 it was just so, it was just weighing real heavy on my spirit. And I was like, you know, I'm naturally like a, a natural counselor just based off of, you know, being in the truth and doing these videos, etc. But it's like you, it's only so much you can, you know, help with people that's in the world. And it was just, it was honestly just becoming a little draining. And it was getting to the point where I was waking up and I'm like, tell my husband, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to work anymore. I don't, I can't do it. Even, although it's part time. I was like, I can't, I don't want to do it anymore. He was like, you know, you don't have to work. And I'm like, yeah, but it's nice to have a little extra income. It's just, you know, it's nice. You know, I'm going to just pray on it. It was just like literally weighing so heavy over my spirit. Like, what should I do? And I was like, you know, I'm going to just give it to the most high and prayed about it, talked about it with my husband. I was just like, all right, um, I'm going to quit. We was like, look, we're going to quit this week, whatever, fine. So that week, when I said I was going to quit, they pulled us in for a meeting. And I was still saying I was going to quit, but I still was unsure. Because I was like, ah, I don't know. But um, they pulled us in for a meeting. And it was like, oh, you know, our contract is ending. And, you know, pretty much they said that we were laid off. And I was like, oh, you know, everybody was devastated. Every, I'm not going to hold you. Because it was like a team's meeting. So everybody was looking, you know devastated like what we about to do i thought this contract was like never going to end and people were bank like they were banking on this job like it wasn't going nowhere like this job was like a permanent job it was it wasn't going anywhere and i was doing my research and i'm like yeah it looks like this was like locked in and they were down with this company etc like i don't know what happened but I'm like, I know the most high did not have everybody get laid off for me. I know he didn't. You know, I'm just like, what? The whole time I'm in a meeting and I'm like, I know, I know this is not real right now. I call my husband after the meeting. I call him and I tell him what happened. He was like, are you serious? I said, yes, isn't that so sick? Like we were just like so mind blown. And I'm like, I still can't wrap my mind around it because when I tell y'all, it was like making me, like the job was making me sick. Like literally making me so stressed out, you know, dealing with the kids and with my animals and dealing with these people and their spirits. And I, I literally couldn't believe that the Lord, I couldn't believe that he was hearkening to what we were talking about and to the prayers that, you know, we were asking for. And this is something that, it may seem kind of light, but it was weighing real heavy on me. You know, I know sisters can go through worse things. Of course, it's always worse. And that's how I looked at the situation. Like, you know, this is not a heavy situation to think about. Just do it. But the Lord put certain things at that moment in my life. It was weighing real heavy on me. But, you know, I know, again, it could always be worse. But I was just like, wow, like, you know, the Lord is so merciful. Like the Lord is so merciful, he made the decision for me. Because I'm like, I, I gotta fast on this. I gotta, I don't know. That's how much it was troubling my spirit. But yeah, you know, the Lord, I asked in his name and look, he did it. And I, I have a peace of mind now where I don't have to deal with these people. Today's my first day in about I've been working for October, November, December, for like a half a year, maybe like I don't know, seven months now. So it's the first day in a long time that I can actually just enjoy my Monday and not be cussed out, not have people get an attitude with me, not have to tell people terrible news. You know, I'm just I feel so grateful that the most I hearken to my prayers and it's just it's something that's just so small. You know, so how much more for the, the bigger things that we ask for when it comes to salvation, when it comes to asking for more faith, when it comes to, you know, some sisters might be trying to look for a house. 
you know, you might be trying to figure out how you're going to get a spirit off of you. You might be trying to figure out, you know, what your kids going to wear, what you're going to eat. Back to school coming up. But the Lord said, don't worry about tomorrow. When you have that spirit of really worrying about tomorrow, giving your mind over to heaviness, that boils down to having a lack of faith. That's why I said in this situation, I was like, I'm, I'm giving it to the Most High. I said, I'm going to just give it to the Most High. He's going to put it in my spirit to do whatever I want to do, if, whether I stay, whether I quit. I don't know what's going to happen. Fine, I don't know. And I, I truly trusted in the Lord, and he, he hearkened to my prayer. And the whole, everybody lost their job. When I say everybody done lost their job in our little, in our department, everybody lost their job. And... I was just like, wow, you know, it's crazy. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing too hard for the Lord. All right, this is Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So you have to rejoice in that hope in the Lord that you have in the hope in the Lord. Like, I, I have faith that the Lord is going to bring us to pass. I have faith that the, the Lord is going to remove these spirits off of me, that the Lord is going to bless me with more knowledge, wisdom, understanding, faith, patience, hope in the Lord, that he's going to put the spirit on me to trust in him and rejoice and hope and to be patient when I go through trials and tribulations. You have to rejoice and have hope in the Lord. And you have to also be continuing in prayer. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So all you've got to do is trust in the Lord and have that, that little bit of faith, that little bit, that little mustard seed, that little bit of faith goes a long way. I was just telling my kids that the other day, like a little bit of faith goes a long way. That you, you don't need much, just a little bit. But you have to be able to trust in the Lord and not lean to your own understanding. When you start leaning to your own understanding, you start doubting the Lord. You start, dang, it's not going to happen. That's when Satan starts to creep in. Oh, the Lord not going to do that for you. You're not even worthy of that. The Lord not going to do this down a third for you or your family. Look at what you just did last week. You went off. The Lord's not going to do that for you. But that's how sisters can lean to their own understanding. Having that doubt. But if you trust in the Lord, you're not going to lean onto your own understanding. And you're not going to let Satan get into your mind and plague your mind with thoughts of what the Lord not going to do. Or what could possibly, what bad could happen in the situation. All right, you have to acknowledge the Lord. And when you acknowledge, acknowledge the Lord, that means that you're fasting and that you're praying, that you ask in the Most High to sup with you and to bless you and to have mercy on you. And then the Lord will direct your paths to whatever he think is the best path for you to go. And on that path of the Lord directing your path, you have to continue to trust in him and have hope in him, being continue in prayer. All right, and I want to close it out with Hebrews 11, 1 through 7. You know, for having more faith. I know you can get off of my cat. So lucky about having more faith. All right, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And y'all, quick little, before I move on to the rest of the scripture, before I move on to the rest of the scripture, I remember I saw this post. I saw this um, Hebrews 11 and 1. I was shopping. I was in the world. And I was like, I don't know what this means, but all I know is that it says, and that's so crazy how you can read something and just have no understanding. I, I did not understand Hebrews 11 and 1 for nothing, but I got the picture and I um, I was redecorating my apartment when I was in the world. I got the picture, I hung it up and I would just stare at it. And I'm like, what does this mean? Like, it must mean just have more faith. I don't know. I didn't know what it meant. And that's, that's so crazy how I can read this now and just have the understanding of faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You have to have hope that everything is going to work out. You may not be able to see it physically, but spiritually, you know, you can kind of imagine it happening, envisioning it happening. You can't see it right now, 
but the Lord is going to bring it to pass if it's according to his will, but more importantly, if you have faith and if you trust in him. All right, so let's just go back into it. It's Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things were so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah war warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he was condemned of the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith you know all of our forefathers i could go on and on y'all but i'm going to try to make it a little short but you know all of our forefathers and foremothers had faith in the lord anna esther judith jael sarah Rebecca, all of our foremothers have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So how much more us? So Khan, you know, all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know, just a quick little motivation for sisters to continue to endure, continue to have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It's nothing too hard for him. And whatsoever you ask in his name, I don't want to rot his eye, that will he do. Lord willing, sisters have a beautiful week through the spirit and the most high strength in y'all spirits to... Just constantly enduring to the end. You know. Kohaloi Haobashim Yao Shai and have a great week, y'all. Love y'all. Shalom.